Hi guys, um, we're going to be talking about respiration in this video, but before I go into the details, and I'll probably follow this up with, um, you know, those videos that cover more of the detailed stuff, I want to take a zoomed out view of what's actually happening in the overall process. Okay, so this is going to be kind of respiration light, if you will. Um, I'm just going to go through the main stages, three stages that are really important in under understanding the overall, uh, you know, um, breakdown of glucose and using the energy released to form ATP. Um, so that gets into quite a lot of detail and you need to know the structural features of the mitochondria that kind of make that process happen more efficiently. You need to know the detailed uh, process of um, which chemical reactions and which enzymes and which uh, electron carriers are involved. Um, however, before we look at all that detail, I think it's going to be very useful to just step back and look at the whole thing in one go. And then we'll look at how each bit happens in detail. And that will be in, in the subsequent videos, but this one is just about the zoomed out view. So, let's begin. What is respiration? Ultimately, the thing that matters the most is that there's a molecule called glucose and in the bonds that join up the atoms that form that glucose molecule there is energy and we are breaking this molecule down bit by bit to something very simple like carbon dioxide and we're using the energy that's released at each stage of that breakdown ultimately to make that a store, a chemical store of that energy called ATP. Okay, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this, but we're going to look at the journey, we're going to look at the process. How do we go from glucose to ultimately forming ATP? And everything else is basically, uh, to me, it's accessories. Yeah, everything else happens as a result of that. The main story is how do we use the energy that's in glucose to make ATP? And remember, it's ATP that we use to drive all the other processes in the cell, in the body that require ATP. Or, sorry, that, that need energy. Okay, so let's begin. Glucose, and now this is our cell right here. This is our cell, right in the cytoplasm, we've got glucose. Um, <clears throat> and what happens next? So in the cell we have a mitochondria. We've zoomed in to kind of look at its components. Here, all right. So we start off with glucose. Now the first stage is called glycolysis. First stage, glycolysis. First stage is called glycolysis, and that is happening in the cytoplasm of the cell. Okay, um, and we've got glucose in the cytoplasm. So. There's lots of steps in this process, but we're going to summarize it. We're going to look at what happens right at the end. Glucose is converted into, so glucose, remember, is six carbons, C6H12O6, six carbons, and that, in the process of glycolysis, happening in the cytoplasm, is converted to a molecule called pyruvate, okay? And this is still in the cytoplasm, and pyruvate is three carbons, so actually, we have two of these guys, okay? So one molecule of glucose broken down to pyruvate, and um, what happens next is that this pyruvate then enters the mitochondria, right? So first stage is essentially summarizes glucose being broken down to pyruvate, but this pyruvate then is a three carbon molecule, it enters the mitochondria. Okay, now in the mitochondria, pyruvate is then broken down into a two carbon molecule called acetate, and acetate is then added on to a coenzyme called coenzyme A. So pyruvate is broken down to a two carbon acetate and it's added on to 
a coenzyme called coenzyme A. I tend to think of coenzymes as basically like a shuttle. It's temporarily hanging on to this so that it can take it on to the next stage. And it's going to unload it somewhere else and then come back to get more of this group, this acetyl group. And this acetyl group is two carbons big. And so the other thing that must have happened is we've lost a carbon dioxide. We've lost a carbon here. So we've lost a carbon and it's gone on to form carbon dioxide. But again, that's a side issue. All right, so pyruvate enters the mitochondria. We lose a, a carbon in the form of carbon dioxide. And the two remaining carbons in this acetyl group are attached onto this coenzyme called coenzyme A. Okay, now, actually, it's taking up a bit too much space. Acetyl-CoA is formed, carbon dioxide is lost there. Now, this acetyl-CoA is then a fuel for the next stage. So it provides carbon atoms in the form of the acetyl group to a cycle. And in this cycle, a number of chemical conversions occur. A number of chemical conversions occur in this cycle. Now, it's, it's a quite important cycle called... Is there apostrophe there? Probably is. Krebs. Possibly not. Krebs cycle. Okay. Now, again, this is going to form, you know, a, a quite detailed discussion on its own, but I think it's important to step back and just look at, overall, what is the contribution of this cycle to the process of getting ATP made from the energy that's in glucose. Now remember, thanks to glucose, we have these acetyl units, and these acetyl units are being transferred into the Krebs cycle thanks to acetyl-CoA. Once the acetyl groups are delivered to the Krebs cycle, this coenzyme A is going to go back and collect more acetyl units. So, acetyl-CoA, enters, or the, at least the acetyl groups of the, the CoA uh, enter the Krebs cycle. And the whole point of this Krebs cycle is to slowly um, convert and change the acetyl groups that are coming into it in a similar way to how uh, carbon is added into the Calvin cycle and it joins on to existing molecules and chemical conversions happen. In the same way, in this case, carbon is coming in a kind of, uh, in the two carbon acetyl group form, enters the cycle, adds on to existing molecules, and these chemical changes occur. Now, when these chemical changes occur, they release energy, and that energy is kind of captured in the form of electrons and protons, okay? So, acetyl groups enter the Krebs cycle, um, the CoA comes off, and kind of goes to collect more acetyl units. But in these chemical changes, one of these is the reduction of NAD. Now, in, in, in photosynthesis, we had a coenzyme called NADP. In respiration, we have a coenzyme called NAD. And that is reduced to NADH. Remember, reduction is the addition of, or the gaining of electrons or hydrogen. Another thing that happens in this process, actually, let me shrink this down, space. So NAD is reduced to NADH. And to a lesser kind of numerically lesser extent, um, FAD, another coenzyme, is reduced to FADH. Okay, so that, that's important right there. And we get the release of more carbon dioxide. Now, we're not thinking about numbers here, we will go into that in subsequent videos. But the main thing here is that 
The glycolysis provided the pyruvate. The pyruvate entered the mitochondria. The carbons from that pyruvate got added onto the coenzyme A in the form of acetyl units. These acetyl units enter the Krebs cycle and the cycling of molecules in the Krebs cycle allows us to reduce NAD to NADH, FAD to FADH. So we can think of the energy in those bonds in glucose now being transferred into the electrons and the hydrogens that were used to reduce the NAD and reduce the FAD. So if we're tracking the energy, right, glucose, pyruvate, acetyl units, and now FADH and NADH, okay? And obviously as a side product, we've got the release of carbon dioxide, so there you go. There's the carbon dioxide that we produce in the process of respiration, okay? So, what happens next? So we've done one stage, we've done two stage, stages, and now the third and final stage, which is what happens to this, these reduced NAD, these reduced um, coenzymes, the reduced NADH and the reduced FAD? Well, they then take their electrons that they are carrying in them and the protons that they are carrying to the electron transport chain, which is a series of um, electron carriers, a series of proteins which are embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Okay, this is all happening in the matrix right here. So just like this, the well, could we call it the stroma? Yeah, possibly. Um, anyway, the matrix is this inner kind of fluid within the organelle of the mitochondria, and this space between the outer membrane and the inner membrane is called the intermembrane space, just for reference, but we'll come back to these things later on. So what's now happening to the NADH and FADH? Now, NADH then goes, and it's the electrons that it's carrying, remember a hydrogen is essentially just a proton and an electron, the electrons then enter, so the electrons that NADH is providing then enter this electron transport chain and they get transferred through these proteins. Okay, now just like in photosynthesis, the, the transfer of electron from one to another is, a, is an energy releasing process and we can use that release of energy to make something happen. Okay? And you should be starting to see parallels with when we looked at what happens in the chloroplast in the light-dependent stage. But, anyway, the electrons transfer through here. Um, FADH also provides this, but I believe they, these electrons enter at a kind of later stage in the process. Okay? Okay. And the hydrogens, the hydrogens from the NADH get pumped out. So when I was saying that the, the movement of electrons through these, this electron transport chain is an energy releasing process, what is that energy used to do? It's used to pump. And careful to say pump here and not active transport, but it's used to pump protons into the intermembrane space. And every time it passes through one of the electrons pass through one of these proteins, the energy that's released in that process is used to move protons from this matrix into the, the intermembrane space. Okay? into the intermembrane space. And what happens is that we get, we start to form a gradient. We start to build up, the more all of this happens, the more NADH and FADH provides electrons for this electron transport system, 
The more this happens, the more protons we are pumping into this intermembrane space. We then start to generate a very large proton gradient. Okay? And what happens is that these protons then move back into or diffuse diffuse or move down the proton gradient, move down the proton gradient through this thing called ATP synthase. Okay? And as the protons move through the ATP synthase, it drives the synthesis of ATP from ADP and a phosphate group. Okay, and that's our story. So, and but let's just account for the electrons. What happens to the electrons? Well, the electrons are combined with an oxygen and protons to form H2O. Okay, so if we think about what we've just done, we started off with glucose. Okay, and we've ended up with the production of carbon dioxide, and we've now formed water, and we used up oxygen in the formation of that water. Lo and behold, glucose plus oxygen gives you carbon dioxide plus water. That's respiration. Okay, shall we just quickly look at that again? Glucose in glycolysis broken down to pyruvate. A three carbon molecule then enters the mitochondria. In the mitochondria, that three carbon molecule gets broken down to form acetyl or the acetyl CoA, and one of the carbons is lost as carbon dioxide. So the two carbons, just put that there, the two carbons. Um, so one carbon, the two carbons in the acetyl unit then enter the Krebs cycle. And the, the, the cycling of molecules in the Krebs cycle produces reduced NADH and reduced FADH to more coenzymes, as well as the production of carbon dioxide. Reduced NADH, sorry, reduced NAD and reduced FAD then provide electrons for the electron transport chain, protons to be pumped out via the proteins in the electron transport chain thanks to the energy released by the movement or transfer of electrons. This creates a proton gradient down which pro protons move back through the ATP synthase allowing it to synthesize ATP from ADP. Okay, and the electrons are then accepted by the oxygen and the protons that are here in this matrix, and we form water. Okay, so there we have it. That's an overview. Glycolysis, Krebs cycle, electron transport chain, thanks to those three processes, the energy in the bonds between the atoms that form glucose is, is kind of released, and the energy eventually is used to synthesize ATP. Okay, we will come back to this and look in detail, but I think 